Donald Trump said for about three years that he didn't buy the results of the last election, but the past few weeks he said six times that he knew the results of the election were just, even when he was protesting them. What, how does that make you feel? I feel like it was not a fair election. And what what? With all the, the, the ballots that were, the harvested ballots, and just... Um, even if the court showed no evidence of right. that? Yes, amen, yes. It was not a fair election. Even if the courts didn't right. see? Yeah, yeah. Her reason is just harvested ballots? What does that even mean? So are we not a, a nation of laws then? I, you would think that we would be. But, but, but the courts say that. paid off. People are paid off and they have favors. Okay, is there evidence, transactions, receipts to back up this crazy allegation? Because please share it. So judges, like, so even Trump's judges who, who voted, who ruled against him were paid off? I have no idea. No, they, Trump is an honest man. Okay, but that didn't answer the question. Instead, she doubled down and deflected on stubbornness. Have y'all ha ever had interactions like this? Do you think Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton in 2016? Absolutely. So why do you accept that result and not the one in 2020? Well, when you look at the hike in, you know, where it happened overnight, that's really suspicious to me when we're looking at Dominion voting, when you really look at the history of it. Okay, but the 2016 election also used electronic voting systems and Trump was the winner. So by your own logic for me, is that then suspicious? This really shows how stubborn these people really are. But Dominion voting was uh, won a, a, a massive lawsuit for being, you know, slandered because they, it turned out they didn't do anything. All the courts found that everything was on the up and up. Mm, I would disagree. You can't just disagree that something happened. Like, I can't disagree that 9-11 happened or that the Great Depression happened. And election results are not up for your interpretation. They're just objective results. <sighs> do you regret that he has changed his position or do you regret that he had that original position in the first place? On on what exactly? On, on the 2020 election for saying that it was that challenging it for three years, but then saying actually it was long over even before he said it was over. Well, I don't think Joe Biden got 81 million votes, to be quite honest with you. So that doesn't really change my perspective. Facts and evidence are not things that you think did or did not happen. They just happened. Look, we've seen a whole bunch of these MAGA morons. They engage in denial, they deflect to another subject, then they play the victim. But there's one aspect of these interactions that we don't talk about enough and could really help us confront this insanity. And that's talking about stubbornness. And that's why I've come up with a list of three things that you can use to confront the delusional stubbornness of these folks. And this might come in handy the next time that you run into that MAGA friend, coworker, family member, or neighbor when they start spewing nonsense. Nonsense. And by the way, do you like my little tiny hands? First, stubbornness is the cousin of denial. They go hand in hand. And just for clarity, let's give a definition. Stubbornness is having or showing dodged determination not to change one's mind despite overwhelming facts and objective reality to support their contrary position. So like every election denier. <laughs> Like that woman with the nice blonde hair. Perfect example. Election deniers know that the facts are not on their side. And in human behavior, when we're perceived wrong, our self-defense mode is triggered. Our fight or flight response is enacted. Hence, stubbornness. The second thing you need to know is that stubbornness displays something that we call in the field of political psychology as motivated reasoning. And the first woman is a perfect example of that. See, in spite of evidence and logic to the contrary, the woman's desirability to maintain her pre-existing belief, she forces herself to come up with crazy allegations and excuses to maintain that previous position, like saying that the judges were somehow bribed or that they were granting favors. Motivated reasoning is often something that happens consciously or often unconsciously. It's kind of like a political homeostasis. Homeostasis being our body's ability to regulate its temperature. Like when you sweat when it's hot or you produce extra body heat when you're cold. In our political psychology, we do the same thing with facts and evidence that we decide to embrace or throw out to maintain our pre-existing beliefs. And it doesn't need to make sense or logical, uh, does not need to make logical sense for it to be something that we embrace. So we'll come up with allegations to maintain our previous position, even if it doesn't add up. 
And the third thing you need to know is that it really comes down to cognitive convenience despite evidence to the contrary, like this guy. We're talking about the election of 2020. Donald Trump recently said that it was a done deal, that they knew that before they challenged it, they knew it after the election. He now says that, though he, he for a long time, had been fighting that. How do you square that? You know what? Let's, I'm going to put it from my standpoint, okay? I went to bed. Trump was blowing it out of the water. I watched the 14,000, was it 14,000 or 140? No, I saw the vote change, and then we woke up and Biden won, all right? There's no way he, it felt like he could have won. Everybody was, everybody was surprised. A lot like the Gore and Bush thing, you mean? Yeah, yes. Um, Gore was winning, and then everyone woke up and Bush had won, had come man, Yeah, correct. And look at the shenanigans that went on. They were kicking Republicans out of the voting sites. They're putting pizza boxes up. I don't know what the hell that was. We've never seen that before. That was unprecedented. So to see that and you wonder why people don't have faith in our elections anymore, it's that kind of stuff. You see how his stubbornness and desirability kind of took over and forced him to double down in a mode of self-defense instead of accepting evidence to the contrary. I mean, his evidence was that the vote changed and that he didn't like it. Well, tough dude, build a bridge and get over it. So you might be asking, well, Scott, how are we supposed to have effective discourse with these people? Well, in some cases, you might not be able to, but in other cases, you might not have a breakthrough, but you can plant a seed. And think about why that may be. Put yourself in a MAGA person's shoes. You've staked your entire identity, livelihood, community off of being a MAGA supporter. You buy the shirts, the hats, the merchandise, the flags, the yard art. You post online relentlessly. And then all of a sudden you receive a whole bunch of information that is inconvenient. And in an act of self-defense, you double down because you don't want to be disproven. You've already put so much time and investment and community, culture into being a Trump supporter, being a part of that. To be proven wrong, to allow yourself to confront the truth, takes courage. Normal human behavior, we want to maintain that political homeostasis. And until you actually commit to something bigger than your own emotional well-being, once you actually commit to the objective reality and it forces you to go against what you've always been told, that can be a really tough step to take. Trust me, that was me. Going through and getting rid of that stubbornness. Think about the benefits and costs. The benefits of pursuing truth for the purpose of truth itself objective reality, looking at the results, even if they are not convenient for how you truly feel, committing to truth for the purpose of courage and the purpose of stability for our society is worth it enough. But the costs of going against your family, going against your friends, all the money that you already spent on trips, going to rallies, buying the merchandise, the benefits and costs can be different for certain people depending on their values. So how do we confront this stubbornness? So how do we get through to these people? How do we free them from their intellectual prison that is this MAGA cult where they're forced to double down because of their own convenience. Well, first off, my advice is don't be condescending. It does not help. It only makes them double down in self-defense even more. It drives them to want to prove you wrong out of that stubbornness. So being condescending only hinders our goal of trying to reach these people. Also, another piece of advice, building rapport, meaning like finding areas of agreement and building a relationship off of that, de-escalating inflammatory language, and also finding common sense consensus. And don't, don't be um, holding judgment about people. Not everyone has been afforded the ability to think critically about these things or been given the opportunity to free themselves from those MAGA shackles. So it's important to reach people where they are, not be condescending, and try and build areas of agreement because that trust does eventually help them see past their own motivated reasoning. My name is Scott Johnson. You can find more of me here on Rebel HQ. Um, so make sure to smash that follow button. If you like my tiny hands, please make sure to go and check out my YouTube and my TikTok, which are both in the description box below. I do a morning show on TikTok at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please go and check that out. But most importantly, do not forget to smash that subscribe button to Rebel HQ. Have a fantastic, incredible, awesome, outstanding, and amazing rest of your day. <laughs>